Did you know that the five shapes of major pentatonic can be used as a fantastic frame to see the major scale all over the neck in 12 keys, all 12 keys. First thing is let's talk about the difference between the major scale and, and uh, the major pentatonic scale. There's the obvious simple fact that the major scale is seven notes and major pentatonic is five notes pulled from the major scale. Those five notes are the root or tonic, second, third, fifth, and sixth. Those same five notes could be thought of as the root or the beginning tone of the five different shapes of major pentatonic. So here's root shape. And I see the root here on both E strings, and that's called a visual guide tone. Your second shape, starting on the second, third shape, starting on the third, fifth shape, and sixth shape. If you don't already know, major and minor pentatonic are the same thing. They just start on different tones. So a lot of people see that shape, and they go, well, that's minor pentatonic. Yes, it is. It's minor and major pentatonic. The beauty of thinking in terms of major pentatonic is that we can use uh, the visual guide tones and see everything in terms of major pentatonic and just know that it's also minor pentatonic when the musical situation calls for it. We've got five notes of the major scale, and that's what makes up our major pentatonic scale. The two notes that are missing are the fourth and the seventh. These two notes are extremely important in many ways. But the first thing you want to know is that they're active tones. That's what they're called. Active tones mean they want to move. And your ear, whether you're a musician or not, can really can tell. So the seventh of the major scale, your ear can decipher that it wants to move up to the root. And the fourth wants to move down to the third. So if I just take a basic progression in G, Go one chord to the four chord, C, and then I go to D. There's that F sharp, and your ear already is expecting this, isn't it? Of course it is. Doesn't mean that's what has to happen, <laughs> of course, but your ear can tell that that's an active tone and wants to go here. That's the beauty of the major scale, are the two active tones. That formula of whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, those two half steps there are what make the major scale the most popular scale in modern music. Every genre you know in modern music uses the major scale, even the most sophisticated levels of music, jazz, etc., Yes, they use other scales, but major scale is still a, a core to jazz, rock, country, fusion, Latin, you name it, okay? So that's why these active tones have this thing that everybody, anybody can relate to. So if it's a simple progression, just like one, four, five, and here, I'm playing that five chord, there's D, but if I add the note C, now you have both active tones happening. And that really wants to move, okay? So this isn't a harmony lesson, but we just, we have to talk about what the difference is between the major scale and major pentatonic. So 
seeing that these are active tones, the major pentatonic scale doesn't have either of them and is often referred to as a shape that has a floating sound to it, maybe sort of spacey for lack of a better word. And we know some guitar players, I bet, out there that use pentatonic in this. Just, it has that non-active tone sound. Nothing's being, nothing's as, as defined because those active tones are gone. And that's what makes major slash minor pentatonic cool to play over chord progressions. That's why it's so popular. Hopefully that gives you an understanding now. We've got major pentatonic, five notes, not using the active tones. And then we have the major scale, which is just adding the two active tones to major pentatonic. And that's what I'm trying to get here when I talk about this being a frame for the whole kit and caboodle. Okay, so here's root shape of major pentatonic. Now, can I see these active tones of the major scale right where I am? Here's all of them. There's an F sharp, there's a C, there's an F sharp, there's a C. Ah. What I tell a lot of my students is that I don't need to think seven note scales. I can use the active tones from the major scale to color an improvisational idea whenever I want. Instead of necessarily worrying about, uh, do I see these shapes like this? What you can do, that's fine. I try to keep my students doing sequences that are even note per string. And so when we first introduce the active tones to the different five different shapes of pentatonic, I have them do it like this. That way, the right hand, especially for beginners and intermediate players, are getting, we want you to forget about your right hand, that everything is just down up. And it doesn't matter, eventually, if you're doing two notes on a string, one, three, five, four, it doesn't matter. But first, you want to work on this, so down, up, down, up. It's just, just like walking. There's no thought about it. And the left hand is directed. Like your brain is directing you to walk somewhere, but you walk just automatically. You've already learned how to do that, and you forget about it. That's what we try to get to, uh, I try to get to with my students. We do sequences. And down the neck, all even note per string. We do it in different ways. So they develop a real sense of freedom with all five shapes. What I'm having them do, though, is as they do sequences, and we, again, we do them all kinds. We do them with string skips. You know, and as sequences of twelves, compound sequences like four, six, four, six. We, we try to, oh, 
always keep in mind the visual guide tone and the shape across the neck, no matter what kind of sequence we're doing. So I'm doing that sequence, but while I'm doing it, I'm seeing that across the neck. Why? Because I want access to the notes when I'm improvising. It's that simple. We want to see these shapes. We want to know how to name them something. So when we want to see them in different keys, which is what visual eye tones help you do, like in an incredible way, then uh, this is what we do. Do the sequences, see the shape across the neck, see the visual guide tones. Now, once you do that, you can see the active tones the two active tones from the major scale in all these shapes. Let's check it out for a second. Here's a sequence of four in G major. Oh, I want to add that active tone. I can do that. I can do this. We're not worried about melodic phrasing or what sounds good or bad. Nothing you would practice here would not become usable at some point in some fashion. Okay, so uh, love it. Just trying to get at there's no wasted practice here if you do this kind of approach with sequences. What also happens is you get out of this and you look and at, at each thing is a separate little increment and start to get your ear hearing these things. When we improvise, we don't run scales. I, maybe for a second, if you want to do a burning thing. But that's not what improvisation is about. That's just a small component of improvisation. So what is great is take these sequences and then see the active tones that you can add them in. I use this term all the time to taste. Like you put salt to taste, you know, to taste in your food. This is add active tones to color your sound. So here's, an, here's another sequence of four. Well, I'll make a sequence out of that and use one of the active tones, the note C. Which, by the way, great for your technique, getting building fourth finger strength, yes. Could that by itself be a cool idea? Sure. All these things are really, uh, you, you're you going to be able to practically apply them in all kinds of musical situations. Also, you're getting away from lick learning and starting to develop your ear by taking the time and listening to what it means when you add an active tone. So here's second shape of G major pentatonic. Do I want to add that F sharp? Sure. Would I rather add this note C? Sure. There you go. There's a C major 7 arpeggio, by the way. Because I've done this for so long, <laughs> we don't want to, uh, I'm not going to say how long, but I, I hear those ahead of time. I hear those ideas ahead of time. And when you can do that, 
there's a real sense of freedom because you know you're going to be able to get something out of your instrument because you hear it and not because it's a lick. And, and you just practice that for however many days, weeks, or months. I know what this is going to sound like in this. And I know what these sequences sound like. I've been doing them for 40 plus years. And then when I change one note, add the active tone. There's, we know from like the greatest players in the, you know, the rock players that came out of the 60s and 70s, many of them had zero training and just had a great ear. You know, and and understood that improvising was like talking, and so they their phrasing was good as well. They could hear these things. And would from my perspective, uh, would add active tones, whether they were from the major scale or what we also call chromatic active tones, like They just use those active tones to color an idea. If I'm playing, that's all just major pentatonic slash minor. But now what, if I add some color in there, Sometimes that's the way I like to think, and I, I know a lot of players that do as well. To say, hey, this is sort of its own thing, its own idea, pentatonic, has that sound. Now I'm going to add some active tones. And it starts to create more tension. That's what active tones are about. Through each shape, you can see where the active tones are. Here's third shape, and here's the active tones. Now, if you're not feeling, if you're a beginner in beginning intermediate, and you're not feeling comfortable with the notes on the neck, this is a much better way to do it in small increments than to try to just remember the seven note scale up and down the neck. You, you, this way you really see in these small increments where your active tones are. That just happened to work out for me. Here's the next shape. The shape built off the fifth. And then sixth shape. There's the shape, and here's with some active tones. the five shapes of pentatonic and even if it's just a little bit every day you know just take sequences of fours and now say hey I'm going to add an active tone so like I'm doing there I'm playing the major pentatonic sequence first of, of fours, maybe play them twice, and then do fours with an active tone. It's 
two active tones right there, folks. That's why I'm doing staying in that shape. And by the way, while I'm doing this, I'm seeing this. Sorry. Just take some time. It's, you're not going to do this overnight or over over months. Yet it, it takes some time to get used to it. But it's going to help you get note recognition going if you're a beginner. If you keep it always two note per string, always, you're really going to be doing yourself a favor with your right hand starting to just go, oh, this is, this is all I have to do. And then even when you do, here's some, here's even, here's odd time sequence. That doesn't bother me anymore and a lot of my students anymore because they just did this. Their right hand got used to the idea that that's all we do. It doesn't matter now if there's three notes on a string and one on another, and just always down, up, down, up. But first things first. Plus, the speed you can develop in clarity. pretty clean and I just just got up recently so I haven't had much practice though. So major pentatonic is your frame for the major scale and when you learn how well visual guide tones work to see in all 12 keys without moving any more than one fret in either direction you're just gonna be amazed. You can play in 12 keys anywhere on the neck with some work yes you know, three months, four months, six, depending on how much time you have. This is not an overnight fix, but there aren't any overnight fixes, folks. Not, <laughs> there just is not, okay? So this, learning the major pentatonic shapes first takes the edge off, doesn't it? It's two less notes we have to learn. So you focus on that first, and then you slowly start to add in the active tones. And, you know, there's other ways to visualize. There's three note per string. And I, I would encourage you, I use three note per string all the time in certain ways. Uh, but we have to learn, if we want to be a working guitar player, and you don't know <laughs> major slash minor pentatonic, then you might look into other occupations. This is fun as well. Because you start hearing cool melodic ideas. Even though this is like mechanical, like I'm doing this, that doesn't mean you can't phrase with those notes later. Right? But you just do it mechanically first. So, right? Okay, I hope that helps. We'll see you in the next one.